Hey, I'm Emma, and I'm our local outreach manager over at GoDaddy Social. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to turn your hobby into a side hustle. I'm super excited to be joined with my co-host, Justin Neely. What's up, Justin? What's up? Seems like everybody these days has some type of side hustle. This is the side hustle economy, right? Wait, what's your side hustle? I just hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, same. Oh my gosh, we are doing the same thing. So what's kind of the big challenge that someone reaches? It's like, yeah, I want to turn this into a side hustle. What's one of the first things that halts them from getting there? I, I think the biggest thing is figuring out what their side hustle is going to be about because mm -hmm. we have a lot of different things we do. Some people like to just eat pizza all day. Some people like, yeah. What was your Twitter handle again? At Emma Wants Pizza. Yes. I look forward to your follow. <laughs> uh, first step is drilling down. What do I actually want to be known for? And what do I actually want to do? When I think of something I'm passionate about, I just want to give it all of my time. I don't want it to be a side hustle. I want to give it 110%. So how do you balance that? Right, I think the biggest thing is to, to start small, right? We can't just go full force on it. Some of us can't afford to take that full leap and just become a full-fledged entrepreneur. That's why we had that side hustle. It's that yeah. great source of income to basically test the waters and figure things out before we can make that leap and see if it's a viable option. Totally. So we got bills, right? Can you really make money with this? Is that something that people get hung up on? Or do you think people get distracted with side hustles that are just full passion projects in hopes that they'll make money one day? I mean, where does that come in? Uh, I think it's both. You can either spend a lot of money towards your side hustle and not take it anywhere, or you can make it something lucrative. So another thing that comes to mind besides, of course, making money with a side hustle is time, resources. What do you have advice about that? So that, that's tough, right? It, the biggest thing is you have to prioritize what's important and set aside time so you can actually work on your side hustle or not let your side hustle control your entire life. Uh, Cause I know I've, I've been there. I freelanced for a while in the past. It caused me to just burn out, which is pretty common in the I side imagine. hustle world. Yeah, right? it like, challenges your balance yeah, every day. 100%. So the biggest thing you need to do is prioritize uh, what you need to accomplish and set aside just specific times of when you're gonna do things. Cause you still have to have a life. Right. You still have to eat that pizza. So what would you say for me if I had a side hustle and you were gonna give me some advice about time management and, and planning ahead? How would I do that? So you can basically take your content calendar to real life. So on Tuesdays, you're gonna work on social media for three hours. And then on Friday, you're gonna do whatever. And you can really just piece that out, mm -hmm. um, but start small. You don't wanna overwhelm yourself and you don't wanna burn out. Cause if you go too full force into this, you'll end up just not liking what you love to do. And we don't want that to happen. How do you decide which platform to use? First and foremost, you have to have a website. That's the, basically the first place that mm. people are gonna go to make sure that you're legitimate. And then two, go to social, make sure you're out there promoting your products, telling people what you do, following people in your niche, having those conversations. And I would still do a little bit of in-person, in real life, right? And have those connections and go to local meetups or go to networking events and find people that are in your your potentially your area, like your, mm -hmm. your niche, right? And and build up those those kind of I love that. I call that local love. All right, like I dig it. You're the juice bar in Silver Lake. Follow the the yoga studio next door. There's a lot of overlap and similarities between their target audience. Right. Yeah. And then once you get everyone to whatever platform you end up choosing, your website, social, in real life, that local love, right? You gotta get paid. There's a lot of cool platforms out there that make it super easy to get paid. Like what? We all know Square, right? That little yeah. little thing that just don't, the dongle that gets put in your phone and yeah. you swipe the credit card right there. I am so there. grateful for Square when I go to the farmer's market. And then we have PayPal and Stripe for online processing. So lots of easy integrations like WordPress or just any type of like website builder that we have that you can easily set up and get paid or Venmo if it's a local oh, transaction. I love Venmo. I love Venmo. The random yeah. conversation people have. Yeah. Uh, I see lots of tacos in the uh, how I pay my landlord. Your feed. That's how I keep my friends happy, That's splitting it. those bills. What do you do when it comes to protecting yourself and, and the policies that go along with that? Right, and this is something that you might have to go and get advice from a lawyer with because you want to make sure that you're protected. Yeah. 
you'll probably wanna file some sort of LLC or register your business in some way. There's a couple different variations, but do that first and foremost. Uh, on your website, if you have one, terms of service is a must. Same with the privacy policy, mm. especially with some of the GDPR stuff that I won't go into in this episode. Um, and then check out just, there's a lot of generators out there for like uh, web design contracts, for example, or just random like service contracts that you can use and protect yourself and your audience. Okay, so this probably won't come as a surprise that I'm gonna ask this, but how will you promote this side hustle? You know, I'm a little biased to the social media. You got but your love. Got my love for the social media, but how are you gonna promote it? The biggest piece of advice is that I can give is have some sort of lead generator on your website because leads turn into customers. And that lead generator could be an ebook, it could be a video series, it could be some of your blog content, it could be coaching, it could be whatever you want it to be, just that free piece of advice or free content that you can give your audience that then turns into leads and you continue that conversation with them. Oh, absolutely. Right? And now with social media, your, what are your top three social media platforms? If I was to run a side hustle, yes. what do you want me on? All right, that's easy. Instagram for yours. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Okay. Uh, that's gonna help you to reach a variety of demographics, which last we spoke, that was your side hustle. It wasn't specific to an age group. Um, also, they work, they work better together so think about this too, and this is what's really cool about your side hustle, is you have a variety of angles to go. You could post something that's educational today, mm -hmm. but also besides educational, you could post things that are just entertaining. Uh, also some great ways to engage on social media to spread more word of mouth, to okay. promote your business, ask questions that your target audience would wanna answer. Mm -hmm. And so you're mixing up the types of posts that you're doing, and as a result, you're getting that real word of mouth. And like you say, you don't wanna go on there and just sell, sell, sell. You wanna go on there and tell, 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 yeah. right? It can't be all about you and say, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, because no one wants to actually follow that and, and be a part of that. They're just gonna scroll past you or unfollow you. How do I know that what I'm doing, the promotions I'm putting together, the time I'm investing, it's getting me a return on investment for my side hustle? And that's tough. What a lot of people get hung up on are subscribers and like counts, mm -hmm. which it, it's somewhat important. What's more important is, are your sales, right? Like, are you making an impact? And are they buying from your service or product that you have for your side hustle? So there's lots of different tools out there that could potentially track a lot of that, like QuickBooks for your sales or uh, online bookkeeping. Facebook has a lot of really great just tracking in software. So oh, you can yeah. see your engagement. You can see how many people have viewed your post, viewed your video, yeah. liked it, Clicked shared it. Clicked on the post. Same thing with Instagram. Yeah. You can see how many people viewed it, liked it, commented. Engagement rate. Right, so wherever, you're, whatever platform you're using, there's something to track that, that visibility. Or uh, with your website itself, you can use Google Analytics to see how many people are coming to your site, how often they're coming to your site, how they're staying on there, are they just bouncing? Uh, it's called a bounce rate. They're just literally just bounce, they're out. But what about paid promotions? This is the part where a lot of people end up spending a lot more into the personal side hustle than it actually pays them. Um, it's really easy today to start putting $5 a day, $10 a day, and at the end of the month, you're like, where did my money go, right? <laughs> this is supposed to make me money. <laughs> so what I would say to that is start small. Start with a couple dollars here and there mm -hmm. and kind of figure out what's getting you the traffic, what's actually converting to sales, and once you find something that works, expand on that. There's no like one size fits all when it comes to paid advertising. I but I can that. say like going back to what we said earlier is making it about how you help your audience and how you can really help them grow. All right, that's a wrap. Justin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And for all of you listening in, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. More videos and fun and laugh and learn sessions to come.